Cindy Sherman's life began in 1954 in Glen Ridge, New Jersey, a suburb of New York City. Her family, having moved shortly after her birth, left Sherman as the youngest of five children in the town of Huntington, Long Island. Unlike some budding artists, Sherman was not particularly involved in the arts as a young person. Sherman's parents were not involved in the arts either. Her father made a living as an engineer and her mother worked as a reading teacher. Sherman has said that, It wasn't until college that I had any concept of what was going on in the art world. And now, the behind the music on Cindy Sherman. Despite her parents' lack of artistic interests, they were supportive of her choice to enter art school after finishing high school. Though, according to Sherman, her mother did caution her to take a few teaching courses just in case. Thus, Sherman's exploration of art began at the State University College at Buffalo. I remember specifically that Cindy had specifically said that uh, she had lost a certain type of interest while uh, painting pictures. She felt that she was painting the same thing over and over again like other artists had made. She came to me one day and uh, she actually told me that she didn't feel like painting anymore. She actually felt that she should give up. And it was a big letdown for us and the, uh, the clique that we had established, uh, myself and uh, Cindy, was the extent of our clique. We didn't really get along with anybody else at uh, Buffalo University. Lacking the critical connection needed to proceed with painting, Sherman turned to photography, of which she studied for the remainder of her time at Buffalo. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember. When we graduated back in 76, I mean, honestly, 76 was some crazy times anyhow. I remember that she and I, we kind of went our separate ways. I came back to uh, Jersey, and she decided to go to stay in New York City. She got, like, an apartment somewhere. And uh, she told me that she had started taking pictures of herself. Now, of course, being the strappingly great man that I am, I uh, wanted to see these pictures as soon as possible. While many mistake these photographs for self-portraits, these photographs only play with elements of self-portraiture and are really something quite different. In each of these photographs, Sherman plays a type, not an actual person, but a self-fabricated fictional one. There is the archetypal housewife, the prostitute, the woman in distress, the woman in tears, the dancer, the actress, and the malleable, chameleon-like Sherman plays all of these characters. <laughs> yes, quite. I recall when she started taking her sex pictures. That's Cindy. She is one funny girl. How do I feel about Cindy Sherman's work? Well, considering um, I may have been dead for about 550 years, uh, I do believe that what I have seen of these photographs, is the word photographs? Yeah, yes, photographs. I believe that the images that were portrayed in the, the sexual pictures was actually very interesting. I mean, I recall when I was a young lad tending the plow on my parents' farm. But um, the photography was actually really kind of moving, and, and, and in a sense, it was kind of, kind of breathtaking to look at, especially the, uh, the genitalia that, that she did the extreme close-ups on. Um, I thought at first that uh, she, she would get kind of, kind of a bad, bad vibe from from giving those kind of pictures out, but it actually seemed that it, it opened a brand new door for, for uh, sexual photography and uh, the pornography industry. Uh, I, I recall thinking, what if I was to take my two dolls that my parents have given me and, and set them up in a, a, a particular particular setting that would make them seem as if they were doing sexual acts? Only, they weren't real people doing acts. I mean, come on, how could that be not be, you know, moving or, or inspirational of sorts? Sherman's life and work has been populated by more than just conceptual photography. She has been married to video artist Michael Otter for over 16 years and has found time in her busy career to add work and motion pictures to her resume. In 1997, Sherman's directorial debut, Office Killer, starring Gene Triplehorn, was released in theaters. Have I spoken with her since? I mean, uh, we had a certain type of falling out when I went to go visit her up in New York City. 
Uh, it was during the election season, I believe we were attending a fundraiser for Diddy Runs the City. Now, P. Diddy is actually a, a wonderful person to look to when you're actually interested in voting and uh, promoting yourself, but uh, we got into a sort of an argument. I uh, haven't really spoken with her much since. It's practically everywhere that you look. You see pictures and photographs and art. I mean, it's, it's a little overwhelming. I'm... I'm actually still not completely sure why you're asking me. I was, I was on my bridge and there was a bright light and two guys came out of this, this phone booth looking thing and put me inside of it and I came back here. Today, Sherman has returned to using herself as a model. At a recent show at her New York gallery, Metro Pictures, Sherman displayed a series of portrait-like images of herself in the guise of women from California. Unlike some of her early photographs, these are more straightforward images of created characters, not narrative fragments. Sherman continues these projects in New York City, where she currently lives and works. But, uh, in the event that the, the phone booth does come back, I would like to travel back. But, um, yeah, Cindy Sherman's art is, is really interesting. <laughs>